All right, I'd like to briefly revisit a concept that I've discussed in our previous videos about calculating the gravitational force on an object on Earth, right? We use this little g constant um, quite frequently, but we recall that we derived little g from Newton's universal law of gravitation. And so little g on Earth is 9.8. And little g tells us about the strength of the gravitational field on Earth. In other words, if we drop an object on Earth and it falls freely through space, acted on solely by the force of gravity by the Earth, it falls with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So I can define a little g term for any planet or celestial body that produces a field of gravity to determine how strong objects near that planet would be pulled or would accelerate towards that object. And so hopefully you recall from before that if we take this big G, R squared, and one of the masses, and for Earth, we said that this was the mass of the Earth, right? And then the radius, again, this was the radius of the Earth in this case, so the actual planet's radius. Uh, big G is still just big G. We define this whole thing to be equal to a constant called little g, right? And that's how we define this equation that we've been using, that the force of gravity exerted by the Earth on an object on Earth is equal to g times the mass of that object, right? m2 became the mass of any object on Earth. And so the weight of any object or the force that the Earth exerted on that object was just equal to little g times m because we took all of these values, g, m, and r squared, as a constant we call little g. So we can do this for any planet or any object or celestial body, really. Um, little g is just defined as big G times the mass of that planet divided by the radius of that planet squared. And so if you were to, you know, find yourself on an unknown planet, you could drop an object on that planet and the acceleration of that object that you would see would be this little g constant. I'd encourage you to plug in the mass of the Earth right here and the radius of the Earth into this formula just to make sure that you get 9.8 for little g. All right, we're going to do some examples now where we calculate the gravitational field strength, or little g, for different planets. And so we'll actually look at Jupiter, uh, the moon, which is not a planet, but is a celestial body, and Mars. See if you can solve these yourself. Pause the video and see if you can use this expression for little g to solve for the gravitational field strength, or otherwise known as the acceleration due to gravity, on each of these three celestial bodies. Okay, so for Jupiter, little g would look something like this. Plugging in my values and then using my scientific notation operations, uh, I'll get a value of 25.9 meters per second squared. So roughly uh, two and a half times the force of gravity or the acceleration of gravity on Earth. And so even though the radius of Jupiter is larger than the radius of Earth, the mass of Jupiter is so much greater than the mass of the Earth that it accounts for the larger acceleration due to gravity on Jupiter. All right, now for the moon, little g would look like this. So it looks like the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is only 1.6 meters per second squared. So a fraction of the force of gravity or the field of gravity on Earth. And this is an answer we also would have expected. The mass of the moon is significantly less than the mass of the Earth, while the radius of both the Earth and the moon are the same order of magnitude. Uh, they're both multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. All right, and then finally, little g for Mars would look like this. It looks like little g for Mars falls somewhere between the moon and the Earth. The mass of Mars itself is somewhere between the mass of the moon and the mass of the Earth as well. One last note about calculating little g, or the gravitational field strength on a planet. This equation is not on your AP Physics 1 equation sheet. What that means is you'll need to know how to calculate little g without being given the formula explicitly. However, this is just the formula for the universal law of gravitation without that mass of the object, right? So it was as if we removed this mass of the object, take that away. And again, recall that that's because the way we derived this, little g, little g is the acceleration on an object on that planet, so the mass of that object is irrelevant. Um, the mass of that object will essentially uh, not dictate how that object will accelerate towards the Earth or towards whatever planet you're on, but strictly by the mass of that planet and the radius of that planet itself. 
So uh, just know that this is essentially derived from Newton's universal law of gravitation by removing that second mass or the mass of the object.